Are you ready for the ultimate hack in meal prep? Homemade meals that you don't have to put in your fridge or your freezer. And you can prepare them days, weeks, months, or even years in advance. Hey guys, it's Jero with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. What are we talking about here? We're talking about meals in jars, jar meals. These meals are magical. They are the ultimate marriage of convenience food with homemade from scratch cooking. Because usually when you think of convenience foods, what comes to mind? It's usually not the healthiest food, right? It's loaded with preservatives and sodium, carb heavy, fat heavy foods and meals, lacking in vegetables. So it's not the best stuff to put in our bodies, but sometimes with our busy lives, we just need fast, easy, convenient meals. And if we're experiencing an emergency or some kind of disaster or crisis, forget about it. Gourmet cooking is not happening. And we need quick, easy, non-energy intensive food. So for all these reasons, we turn to convenience foods, but we feel guilty the whole time about eating it and feeding it to our families. And we wish that we were feeding them home cooked meals we made from scratch. Well, now you can have both all wrapped up into one simple mason jar. This is why we love meals in a jar. We can stock our pantry with a variety of these meals that I put together from scratch. I know what's in them. I source the best, cleanest ingredients out there. Everything I need is in the jar, including the meat, including the vegetables, including the dairy, including the sauce or the seasoning. And if I seal it up with an oxygen absorber, it can sit on my shelf for years or until I need it. And then I just grab it off the shelf and all I need to do is add water and bring it back to life. These meals usually cook up very quickly. In fact, I'm gonna show you how I cook these up on my emergency butane burner so you can get an idea of how this would be done in an emergency if the grid was down and no resources were available outside of what you have prepared in your home. If you know me, you know not only do I love meals in a jar, but I also like saving money when I can. Never pay retail, right? So each month, I usually try to come up with a meal in a jar that uses ingredients that are on sale that month because it's a great time to stock up. This month, the shelf-stable tomato sauce powder that we love so much was on sale, which I was super excited about because that's one I don't see go on sale very often. If you watch my hauls, you know I bought a case and I stocked up. Fun fact about the tomato sauce powder, this is the can right here. And this can contains, once it's reconstituted, this contains 51 servings of sauce, half cup servings of sauce. If you look at this, these are a couple of cans, uh, jars that I had in my pantry. This is a sauce that we really like. This jar contains six servings. So this can right here replaces about eight and a half jars like this. And then I also had this jumbo size jar. This jar has 10 servings per container. So this little can right here replaces just over five of these big jars of sauce. So I thought that was pretty awesome. That's one of the reasons we really like this. It's a big space saver in the pantry. I can have, you know, these cans replacing many, many jars of sauce. I also like that we can use as much or as little as we want to at a time. We can just mix up what we need and the rest of it stays good for later. So if my son just wants one serving of pasta, he can mix up one serving of sauce. And I'm no longer finding, you know, three quarters full jars of sauce tucked in the back of the fridge with mold growing on them because I had no idea that he opened it and it never got finished. Having this sauce really also helps us cut down on waste, which we really like because the most expensive food is the food that you throw away. But I knew I wanted to make a jar meal based on that red sauce. And my mind usually goes to hamburg or sausage when I'm thinking of cooking with a tomato based sauce like this. But those weren't on sale this month. What is on sale is our favorite chicken slices. Actually, if you stick around for a while, a little bit later, I'll tell you a secret I noticed about that chicken. But puzzling about that for a little while, the tomato sauce and the chicken issue, it hit me chicken parm. I could do a take on the classic chicken parm. So the first meal that I came up with was a chicken parm pasta. That was going to be my meal for the month. I felt like it was a little bit basic because I couldn't really convince myself that any veggie would go well in this besides tomatoes and parsley, if you can even consider that a veggie, but it is green. So a little basic, but there's nothing wrong with a basic meal every once in a while, especially if you have picky eaters, kids, grandkids, something like that. But then I was cleaning out our freezer and shoved way in the back, I found um, this bag, this Bertoli chicken alla vodka with farfalle. It says white meat chicken with farfalle, which are these bow tie pastas, tomatoes and asparagus in a creamy vodka sauce. 
and I noticed it was a lot like the jar meal that I had come up with. Just a couple of additions would basically make it into this meal. So that's what I did. I created a, another variation of this meal, just a little bit different. And then I thought, while I'm mixing it up, maybe I can come up with one more variation. So I came up with a meatless version that replaced the chicken with a variety of different vegetables. So I'm gonna show you today how to put together all three versions of this meal and give you three more options for your pantry and you'll also get an idea of just how easy it is to customize these meals and change them up based on your preferences, what you have on hand, what's on sale, etc. Okay, so let's get started on our first meal, the chicken parm pasta. It's very simple. The tools we're going to need is basically a wide mouth quart size mason jar. And we're going to be using a canning funnel. That's just going to help us get things into the jar more easily. And then besides that, all you really need are your basic measuring utensils, um, spoons and cups. And then if you want to put these away for long term storage, you're going to want an oxygen absorber to use at the end. The pasta that I'm going to use for the chicken parm pasta is going to be bow ties. I like this shape a lot in my jar meals. So I'm going to go ahead and use two and a half cups of this bow tie pasta in my jar. Because like I mentioned, I'm not using very much vegetable in this, there's room for a little bit more pasta. All right, so there's two and a half cups. Now the trick with these meals in a jar is to kind of shake and tap to try to settle your ingredients down and get everything down as far as you can so we can fit as much as we can fit into these jars. The next ingredient I'm going to be using is some Parmesan cheese. Now this is freeze dried Parmesan cheese. This is going to last a lot longer. It has a lot longer shelf life than the powdered kind you get in a shaker. So this is what we like to use in our meals in a jar. Besides, it's just a better quality cheese. Nothing against the shaker cheese. I use it all the time, but just not in this application. I'm going to be using a quarter cup of the Parmesan cheese. And like I said, if I give this some good shakes and taps, it'll settle that cheese down in among the pasta so it doesn't even take up any more space. The next ingredient I'm going to be adding is tomato sauce powder. This is what it looks like. It's all seasoned. It's all ready to go. It smells delicious. I'm going to be using a half a cup of the tomato sauce powder. Once again, get that all settled down. Now I just want to point out, please take note the difference between these two products. This is what I'm using today in these meals. This is classic tomato sauce mix from Thrive Life. Don't confuse this with tomato powder, which is this ingredient. They're both good to have, but they're very different products. Tomato powder is just tomatoes, freeze dried and powdered, nothing else. There's no salt, no seasoning, no additional ingredients. This is an ingredient, this tomato powder. The tomato sauce powder that I'm using today is seasoned and has additional ingredients. It's basically a spaghetti sauce, but in powdered form. Think of it as the difference between using this product and this product. If you opened up a can of plain no salt added tomato sauce and poured it on your pasta just like that, it probably wouldn't taste very good. This one is a complete sauce seasoned and ready to be used as is. Now you could use tomato sauce as an ingredient as a base to make a pasta sauce and likewise you could use the tomato powder to make a sauce like this, but it would need a lot of doctoring. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with tomato powder. It's actually an incredibly versatile item to have in your pantry. It's just tomato, and depending on how much water you add to it, you can make tomato paste, or tomato sauce, or tomato juice, all from this one product, the tomato powder. But in this recipe, I am using the seasoned tomato sauce powder. This is from Thrive Life. This actually is from Thrive Life as well, but there are other companies that sell tomato powder. As far as I know, I've never seen another company selling a spaghetti sauce powder like this. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows this so that no one tries to use tomato powder thinking that that's what I'm using and ends up with a meal that they're unhappy with. I'm also gonna be using a third a cup of diced tomato just to give a little bit of tomato chunkiness to this sauce. And the next thing I'm gonna be adding is a tablespoon each of a couple of seasonings. This one is um, dried parsley flakes and this one is freeze dried garlic, diced um, or minced garlic. Now I do buy my parsley in these large jugs because I use quite a bit of it. This is um, if we don't have any fresh from the garden, but I do usually um, 
put this into a smaller shaker jar, but I haven't gotten it refilled yet. So there's a tablespoon of the parsley, and then I'm just gonna do a tablespoon of the garlic. I love garlic and this stuff smells so good. It smells amazing. And the final ingredient that I'm gonna be adding to my jar is gonna be a cup of these chicken slices. Now these are freeze dried chicken slices, just like the tomatoes and the garlic are freeze dried. This chicken is freeze dried, it's completely shelf stable. We get this one from Thrive Life, but they have several different um, forms of chicken. They have, you know, chopped chicken, diced chicken, grilled chicken, and they have these chicken slices. And these are our favorite because they have really nice big pieces. They're um, seasoned with a little bit of salt and they just cook up so nicely. They refresh so nicely. They're just like fresh chicken. We actually like this better than, I mean, we have our own freeze dryer and we just bought a case of these because we just like um, the uniformity. They always have that great tenderness. Sometimes when I cook my own chicken breast, sometimes I don't get that. Sometimes I get a tough piece or these are always good. I have another friend that I know who orders all her chicken from Thrive Life even though she has her own freeze dryer because she just likes the way that they do chicken better than the way it comes out for her at home. So I'm going to do a cup of these chicken slices. Let's see if we can get this down into the jar. Now when I take off this funnel it's going to leave us a little bit more space. Now of course if you do have your own freeze dryer and you freeze dry your own chicken and your own vegetables, you can absolutely make these jar meals with those ingredients that you freeze dry yourself. But if you don't have a freeze dryer, you don't have to feel like you know you can't participate in having meals in a jar in your pantry because you can purchase the same, most of the same foods that people are doing at home. So the final thing I'm gonna add to this jar before it's completed is a little packet of croutons because you know how when you get um, chicken parm, it's a breaded chicken usually. And so I thought that I've seen a casserole that I've made that uses croutons over the top to give it kind of that um, that same feel in your mouth as having the breaded chicken, even though we don't have breaded chicken in this because this is an adaptation. This is not a traditional chicken parm. So I'm going to add this packet of croutons. Now we got this out of, you know, a takeout salad, but you can also buy these from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description box. And I'm just going to put this in the top of my jar. I'm not worried about if it gets a little bit crushed because what I'm going to end up doing is crushing these. When I prepare my dish, I'm going to take these out. I'm going to crush these up and I'm just going to sprinkle them over the top of the prepared dish. And that's what I'm going to be doing with those. Now, if I was putting this away for long term storage, I would put an oxygen absorber in the top of this jar before I seal it up and that would cause it to seal and it would absorb all the oxygen in the jar, anything that could make these ingredients go bad. So this would stay good for many years. I'm gonna be cooking this one up for you tonight to show you how it turns out, so I'm not going to bother with the oxygen absorber. Usually when I'm doing oxygen absorbers, I will do several meals all at once because when you open a package of oxygen absorbers, you either have to use them up or you have to be able to seal them again airtight or they'll just expire without being used. So if I just have one or two jars, I don't usually bother with the oxygen absorbers right then and I will do them when I have a bunch of jars. All right, so there is our jar. This is our chicken parm pasta meal all ready to go. So for my next meal in a jar tonight, I'm gonna to be doing my version of the chicken and farfalle alla vodka, which is the copy of the Barilla meal that I'm making. Same tools, same process. I'm just gonna use the same funnel because it uses most of the same ingredients. So I'm not worried about mixing those flavors at all. Once again, I'm going to start with the bow ties. This time I'm just gonna be using two cups. Now, of course, you could use any form of pasta that you wanted. I think a penne would be good in this as well. Any form of pasta you wanted. I really like the bow ties in this. I use bow ties in quite a few of my jar meals, actually. So before I add any more ingredients to this, there's one thing I'm gonna do with my sauce. You've seen me do this before if you've seen some of my other meals in a jar. I'm just gonna take this little bowl. Now for our sauce for this jar meal, I'm gonna be using the same tomato sauce powder that I used in the other meal. I'm also gonna be using some heavy cream powder because this is a creamy tomato sauce. And the heavy cream powder can clump up a little bit. It can be hard to blend into things. And so what I like to do is I like to sift this first and I like to mix it with my other sauce ingredients and that just helps with that. So this time I'm gonna be using a third of a cup of the tomato sauce powder. I'm gonna go ahead and get that into this bowl. This small bowl is what I'm gonna to use to get this mixed all together. Now I'm gonna be using a quarter cup of the heavy cream powder. Now you can see how that is a little bit clumpy and I think it has to do probably with the fats in it. 
or just the texture of it in general. But what I do with things like this is I use just a wire mesh strainer, a fine strainer, and I just pass it through this strainer. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the end of this measuring cup to uh, rub this against the strainer and it's going to sift right through. I do this with anything that could be clumpy like this. Anytime I use baking soda in a baking recipe, I always pass it through um, the strainer or a strainer like this, just because that's another thing where you tend to get clumps and it's really unpleasant if you bite into a clump of baking soda. So this is something that I like to do if I've um, powdered up some freeze dried raspberries, for example, or blackberries to use in a recipe and I don't want the seeds. I will pass it right through a strainer like this and it, it sifts out all those seeds. The seeds will remain in the strainer and the raspberry or blackberry powder will go right through. I actually also do that with fresh pureed raspberries and blackberries. It's a little bit harder to uh, rub that through the strainer, but it works and it takes the seeds out. Okay, so now that that is in there, I'm just gonna use a whisk and kind of blend these together. And I think this is just gonna help ensure that this doesn't clump back together. If this sits in the jar, I mean, I know it's not gonna sit in the jar tonight because I'm gonna be fixing this up. But if I were putting this on my shelf for the long term, I wanna make sure that that cream powder is not going to clump back up and give me the same problem when I dump it out into the pan. So now we have made our own creamy tomato sauce powder. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my jar this aside because I'm going to use that same method for one of our other meals. Once again I'm just going to shake and tap this and you can see that the sauce went all down amongst the pasta so it's not even taking up any more space at the top of our jar. So the next ingredient I'm going to add is going to be another seasoning. It's going to be this sherry wine powder. Now I don't have um, powdered vodka or vodka flavoring or anything like that, that like I mentioned and so just to kind of mimic that in this recipe, I'm gonna give this two teaspoons of the sherry wine powder. Now this is something that I looked for quite a long time to find wine powders and I will put um, a link to the source where I found these. Um, I'll put it down in the description box. I would say that this is probably isn't really necessary. If you don't have this, I wouldn't really worry about it. It's 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 fine without it. I do like to have this on hand. I use I use sherry in a lot of recipes that I make, for example, my beef stroganoff. So when I make that into a jar meal, I like to have all of the same flavors that I use in my cooking. So I like having this sherry wine powder. The same store where I found this also had a, I think that it was a Chablis powder and a Cabernet powder maybe. I don't know, I had three different wine powders and I got them all. I believe that gave me free shipping or something probably. It's probably another reason I got them all. But I do love jar meals. I make a lot of jar meals. I really enjoy having all the seasonings and all of the you know ingredients that I typically use in my cooking. I like having powdered versions when I can so that I can mimic that in my jar meals. So we've got the two teaspoons of the sherry wine powder. Now I'm gonna be putting in a teaspoon of this Johnny's garlic spread and seasoning. This is really good stuff. Um, I get this from Amazon. I've never seen this in a store local to me. So I will put a link to it on Amazon where I get it. If you don't have this and you don't care to buy this, um, it's salty and it's garlicky, so any kind of garlic salt or multi-purpose seasoning that is salty like that is going to work. Now, if you have to avoid salt or if you choose to avoid salt or if you don't like your food salty at all, you might want to leave this out at first and try it and see, you know, you can add it in at the end if you do want the extra salt. We like our food a little salty. This really doesn't make it too salty. I felt like it needed this but if you're avoiding sodium, you'll want to watch out. But this is really pretty interesting. You'll see um, it shows you all the different things that you can make with this. You can make um, garlic bread spread, garlic prawns. It has recipes for dressing, for dip. I just use this to season um, a lot of my food that I feel like needs a little bit extra salt and garlic flavor. I use this a lot. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the veggies to this. I'm gonna be using some more of the tomato dices in this. And once again, I'm gonna add a third of a cup of these tomato dices. And then of course, I'm gonna be adding the asparagus. So I'm gonna be putting in three quarters cup of asparagus. See, in case you're wondering what oxygen absorbers look like, this was one that was left over from when I opened this can. They come with an oxygen absorber in it um, when you buy it from the store. 
Um, they come with an oxygen absorber in it when you purchase them. The oxygen absorber is all used up. I, I don't need to leave that in there. When I open them up, I typically throw them away, but this one just escaped me. But just in case you're curious, this is an example of an oxygen absorber. So I'm going to be doing three quarters of a cup of this asparagus. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a half a cup and then a quarter of a cup. And we love this asparagus. The first time I tried this, I went out and purchased a case the next time it went on sale because I was really impressed with the asparagus and, and we really liked it. When it's springtime, I really like to include asparagus in a lot of my meals because that just seems like a really springy um, food to me, a really springy ingredient. And I really like to theme things by the seasons. So now that I've got my asparagus in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken slices and that's gonna be my final ingredient for this meal. And I am gonna add a cup of the chicken slices to this meal as well. Once again, I can shake and tap, and once I lift this funnel, everything will go right down in. And you can press on this a little bit if you need to. This one is just fine. And here it is. Now I'll tell you one secret I've learned when doing these, just to make them look prettier. I try to remember to put any colorful vegetables uh, down here in the middle more. I put my bulkiest ingredients in the bottom, so that's usually the pasta, if there's a pasta, and that's because of those more powdery ingredients filtering through. It really allows you to fit more ingredients in this jar. This is a quart size jar, they hold four cups, so if you were to add up all of the amounts of ingredients that I listed in my recipe, it probably amounts to more than four cups, but because some of these things can filter in among the other ingredients, it allows us to fit more ingredients in. But if I put the colorful veggies right up at the top, and then I put my ring on and I put a tag, you really can't see them, so it doesn't look as pretty. So it's just for looks, but these make really great gifts and things like that, and so it's really nice to have them look good look prettier if you're giving them as a gift or if people just see them on your shelves. They make really great conversation pieces, so I like to make them look as good as I can. So for the third and final jar meal tonight, I'm going to make a Pomodoro Pasta Primavera. Now this is my vegetarian version. I'm not gonna add the chicken. The Pomodoro means basically that it's tomato-based because a traditional Pasta Primavera, it might have some tomato in it, maybe some cherry tomatoes or some diced tomato, but it's not like a tomato sauced dish typically. So this is sort of a different take on a pasta primavera. I'm just calling it pasta primavera because of all the vegetables, but it really just kind of is a vegetarian version of the other dishes. My daughter likes to eat vegetarian. She tried this when I tested the recipe and she really enjoyed it. And there are some benefits to vegetarian meals. You know, if you're gifting it to someone or you're having someone over who's a vegetarian, it's nice to have that on hand, even if you're not a vegetarian yourself. The other benefit to vegetarian meals is that it does cut down the cost because usually the most costly ingredient in any of our meals whether you know they're shelf stable meals or just the typical meals you prepare the most costly ingredient is usually going to be your meat and so if you make a meatless meal you know once a week twice a week if even if you're not a vegetarian it helps you cut down on your grocery budget a little bit so this meal is also going to start with the bow ties two cups of bow ties but like I mentioned you can feel free to mix up the pasta now I'm gonna do the same procedure again with the tomato sauce that I did last time. And it's gonna be the same amount as well. It's gonna be a third of a cup of the tomato sauce powder. And then a quarter cup of the heavy cream powder that I am going to pass through my wire mesh strainer. Now I probably could just use the whisk to do this since I'm using the whisk to whisk the sauce. That's probably actually gonna work better than my little uh, measuring cup handle. Just kind of grabbed whatever I had on hand, but I need this to whisk the sauce in the end anyway, so I might as well use it. If I'm doing um, baking soda, I just use the measuring spoon that I measured it in to just rub and press it through. It takes just a second or two. If you're doing um, fresh berries and it's that liquidy puree, it works really well to use a larger strainer and use the bottom of a ladle to press it through. That works a lot faster than basically any other method I've tried. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk this together once again. Once again, add this into our jar. You can tell I'm being careful. It probably lets you know that I have some experience with this. I have been known to just dump the whole bowl and then it, it goes all over the place. So I've learned through trial and error to be a little bit more careful. shake and tap get that sauce all down in there so the next ingredient I'm going to add is going to be some chopped onions 
Mm, this is another one that smells so good, just like the garlic. If you like onions and garlic, mm. But the best part about this is no chopping raw onions. My least favorite thing to do in the kitchen. Gonna add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese again. And next I'm gonna be adding a half a cup of spinach. I'm gonna be using spinach. You could use spinach or kale. And actually both spinach and kale are on sale this, this month, which is awesome. And I love adding this spinach to anything because it's basically chopped spinach, so it's really little bits and I find that you know, you, the kids don't notice it as much. I add chopped spinach to meatloaf. I add it to all sorts of things. It just adds a little bit of extra nutrition. And when it's chopped, I find that my kids don't really notice it. And this is so much easier than using the frozen chopped spinach, which is what I used to use. And I would, that's probably another dreaded kitchen task. It's worse than chopping raw onions is squeezing the moisture out of that frozen chopped spinach. So when I discovered this stuff, I was so happy. Once again, I'm gonna add some of those same seasonings. I'm gonna use the Johnny's garlic, a teaspoon of this, just like I did last time. And I'm gonna be using a tablespoon of the freeze-dried chopped garlic. So now I'm gonna add the rest of my veggies. I'm gonna be adding a half a cup of green peppers. Once again, all of these veggies are freeze-dried. You can freeze-dry your own or you can purchase them freeze-dried if you use dehydrated, you would have to make some adjustments in the recipe because dehydrated and freeze-dried are pretty different. And dehydrated veggies are going to have a shorter shelf life, so they will affect the shelf life of the jar meal. Now, like I said, that's one of the reasons that I was going to do a whole video talking about the shelf life of these jar meals. But all these veggies and the meats and cheeses that I'm using in the dairy are all freeze-dried. So there's a half a cup of the green peppers. And next, I'm going to use a half a cup of zucchini. And then at the very top of this jar, I'm gonna go ahead and add a quarter cup of sliced mushrooms. You can see that my mushrooms are just about gone, but it's okay, because I've got plenty more down salad, but this is the kind of bits and pieces at the end. But that's okay, because my daughter who likes to eat vegetarian does not love mushrooms, so if they're small bits and pieces, maybe she won't notice. And that's it for this jar meal as well. Like all the others, if you wanted to put this away for long-term storage, you would use an oxygen absorber in the top of it. Look at how beautiful this meal is. Look at all those nutritious vegetables that we packed into this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare these meals for you guys and just show you just how easy it is and show you how they look when they're all prepared. So this is the stove that I'm gonna use to prepare these meals today. It's just a Coleman butane stove. This is probably the most inexpensive butane stove out there. If you can still find one, I will link to this online if I can still find it. I've had this for a few years. This is the fuel that it takes, um, butane fuel. This is a Coleman brand, but I end up getting a better deal. Um, usually at the Asian market on a no-name brand, sometimes there's a really good deal on Amazon. Depending, you just gotta keep an eye on things on Amazon. But you just take off the little red lid, and then you can see this notch here. That's gonna fit right into here. And then I just push this down to lock the canister into place and it's ready to go. It does have an automatic ignition as well. And these are super handy to have. I mean, we have propane camp stoves that we use when we're camping outdoors because propane is a cheaper fuel, but it's not really considered safe um, for cooking inside your house with a camp stove although there are people who do it. We just like to use this one. Butane is considered safer for cooking indoors. It doesn't create carbon monoxide. And it's commonly used in Asian countries and by caterers and things like that. So this is just a great little stove to have. I'm going to start with the chicken parm pasta since this was my original um, recipe. And I'm gonna be doing this in just a skillet. I think this is like a 12 inch skillet. Now, if we were in an emergency situation and say that we were holed up in our basement, for example, or say that we had to grab a bunch of stuff and evacuate, take off from our home, we do have our emergency cooking kit that I put together that we keep down in the basement and it's easy to grab and take with us if we have to leave in a, in a hurry for any reason. But since I'm in my own kitchen, I'm gonna use my own pan. This is a ceramic pan. We've really taken to liking these ceramic pans 
Um, I think that they're a lot better than the Teflon non-stick, which is really, really bad for you. But I believe this is a 12 inch skillet. So just your average, you know, size large skillet is what's best for these type of pasta jar meals. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. Now remember in this one, I put the packet of croutons and that's gonna come out because that's gonna be used at the end to sprinkle over the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the contents of my jar into the skillet. Now the great thing about mason jars is that they are graduated with measurement markings. This is a quart jar so it holds four cups. So if you don't, you know, if you're in a situation where you don't have a measuring cup or you just don't want to dirty up or take out something extra, you can use your jar to measure the water for your dish, which is awesome. I like to do that because it also helps to rinse out any last bit of residual ingredients because I don't like to waste anything. So for this meal, I'm gonna be using three cups of water. It's all about finding the right balance of water to your ingredients to make sure that you have enough water to soften and refresh all your ingredients without making it too soupy when it's a one dish pasta meal like this. If it's a soup, obviously you would use more water, but in a pasta dish like this, we're intending it to pretty much absorb all the water and thicken the sauce and that's about it. But that's the balance when you're cooking with things like freeze dried food also. If something isn't getting tender, isn't getting um, refreshed like you need it to, you either need to add more water or more time. Same with the pasta. So now that I've got the water in here, I'm just gonna give it a stir to get everything moistened, get all of the sauce blended in, all of the ingredients moistened, and then I'm gonna turn on the heat. Hmm smells good it smells like an Italian restaurant in here now that is one of the great things about these jar meals was is that it keeps you out of the restaurants and the takeout and the delivery and it saves you some money it saves you some time being able to eat at home even when you're in a hurry and short on time okay so now that that's all moistened I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this burner I'm gonna leave this on a fairly high heat until it comes up to a simmer. And at that point, I'm gonna turn it down, I'm gonna cover it, and we're gonna cook it for about 15 minutes or until the pasta is tender. Give it another good stir, and then I'm gonna throw the lid on, and I am just gonna let this simmer, and I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. I'm gonna stir it occasionally, keep an eye on it, and check it after 15 minutes and see if it needs to go any longer. Now, the thing with the dish like this, is that the type of pasta you use is also going to determine the cooking time to a great extent because the freeze-dried ingredients really cook up and refresh pretty quickly so if you use a different kind of pasta do check the box and see how long that type of pasta is supposed to cook now i'm going to adjust this so that it does continue to simmer we don't want it to be really boiling in there but we want to make sure that it simmers i am going to stir this occasionally and just try to make sure all that pasta is submerged beneath the liquid. All right, so this is perfectly done right now. The pasta is done al dente. The sauce is thickened up nicely. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this out of the way real quick so that I can get um, my little crumb topping ready. I am just gonna take a rolling pin, a meat mallet, anything like that would work, and I'm just gonna pound these until they're crumbs. I think that's about how I want those. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and plate this up so that we can try it. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Just gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of these crumbs over the top. This is gonna give it the crunch that you would typically see in your chicken parm because of the breaded chicken. There we go. These crumbs also have a nice garlicky flavor to them because they're croutons. So this is gonna be a really great addition to this meal. Next, I am going to be preparing the chicken and farfalla a la vodka, the second dish that we prepared. I'm gonna use the same method, same skillet. There's just gonna be a slight variation in the amount of water that we're going to add. So for this dish, I'm gonna be using three and a quarter cups of water. I know it's hard to see the amount on here when I'm uh, having to tilt it, 
but I am just using this to rinse out every little last little bit of powder of the sauce. And like I said, the amount of water is gonna kind of determine the texture of the final dish. So if you make a dish like this, any of these type of meals in a jar, and you find that you'd like things a little bit more tender, a little bit more saucy, you can always add more water. And you know, make your own notes on your own recipes with what works for you and what doesn't. If you make it with a certain amount of water and you feel like you would like more or less next time, just note that right on your recipe and test it out that way the next time. That's what I usually do. Okay, so I'm just gonna once again mix this all together. This is my favorite part with these meals in a jar because as the water starts to hit these vegetables, you really start to see them come back to life and get their fresh color back. When, when things are freeze dried, they can sort of have a frosty appearance a little bit and then when they get and then when you put the liquid back to them, they really come back to life just like if they were fresh. Okay, so now that I've got this all mixed in and all moistened, it's gonna be the same process. I'm just gonna turn the burner on, bring this up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, put a lid on it. I'm gonna time 15 minutes and then we're gonna check and see if it's done. Okay, so already this is coming to a boil. Once again, just give it a little stir. I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer, put the lid on it and let it go. Stir occasionally for 15 minutes or until everything's as tender as you like. And that's gonna just be removed from the heat and set for a couple minutes because those pasta are tender. So that's another trick with the meals like these besides adjusting the amount of water to change the tenderness of the ingredients and the thickness of the sauce. If your sauce is not thickening up as much as you would like, you can simmer it for the last couple minutes with the lid off. And the other thing is that the sauce will thicken upon standing as it cools off and continues to absorb into the pasta. Okay, so this dish is now ready to serve. Now I often get asked how many servings these jars make. Typically one of these quart size mason jars, you're gonna get three to five servings. Uh, maybe two servings if you have very hungry people. Like to be perfectly honest, I think Mr. Wicked Prepared could eat this whole skillet all by himself. But it's gonna depend on a lot of things, the type of dish that you've made. If it's a soup or a stew or something with more water added, it's gonna go a lot further. It's going to depend on the people you're feeding. If, you, if your family is full of hungry men and teenage boys, it's not gonna go as far as it is if you're feeding a bunch of small children who don't have huge appetites. But I would say that one of these jars makes about as much as your typical hamburger helper would make. When I make hamburger helper, I do make two boxes for my family typically, but a little secret that I use is that I double everything except for the meat. I don't double the meat because like we talked about earlier, the meat is gonna be the most expensive portion of your meal. So you could use the same trick with meals like this. You could um, make a double batch of everything but not double the meat, and that would keep your cost down. See how lovely this is with the asparagus and the chicken, and this is the creamy tomato sauce. And now for my final trick of the evening. Now the last meal I'm gonna be making tonight is the pasta primavera, the vegetarian version with all the vegetables. And I gotta tell you, it is a good thing that my family enjoys this kind of meal because between developing and testing three different recipes, we've been eating a lot of this pasta. So once again, I'm just gonna empty this into the skillet. It's also a good thing that these ceramic skillets basically just come clean with a spray of water because if, you know I hate doing dishes by hand, so. So if I had to spend a lot of time washing the skillet every time, I would be unhappy. So for this meal again, I'm using three and a quarter cups of water and I am using my uh, jar to measure it. And that helps me get every last bit of sauce and seasoning rinsed out of the jar. Same process as before, I'm just gonna get all this moistened and then get it on the heat. Look at all these beautiful green vegetables. This is gonna be so healthy. Now the great thing about this is that you can mix and match and use any vegetables that you want. I chose to use mostly vegetables that are on sale this month, but this would be great with some broccoli or some cauliflower or all sorts of different veggies that you could put into this. Remember, we've got the spinach and the zucchini, the mushrooms, all sorts of good stuff in this pasta. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a boil and get the lid on and simmer it for once again. 
15 to 17 or 18 minutes depending on when the pasta gets tender. Once again, I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm just gonna let it set for just a couple of more minutes. And that's gonna be ready to serve. Okay guys, our final dish is now ready to serve. And I'm really kinda sad that my vegetarian daughter is not home tonight because she really, really loves this dish. Okay guys, how easy was that? Three different versions of this hearty pasta meal. There's definitely something here to please everyone. Like I mentioned, many of the ingredients that I use in these jar meals are freeze dried. If you have a home freeze dryer, you can use ingredients that you freeze dry yourself. But if you don't have a home freeze dryer, that doesn't preclude you from making meals in a jar and having these gems in your pantry. Because many freeze dried ingredients are available for purchase online. We source most of our freeze dried foods from Thrive Life. They are well known as the best in the business. We did our research and we were so impressed by this company and their values and their quality that we joined as consultants and it's been the best decision that we ever made. I'll put those links down in the description box for those of you who are looking to purchase freeze-dried food. A lot of the ingredients that I use today are on sale throughout the end of May. A note about the chicken, luckily I was paying attention when I placed my order because generally you do get a better deal when you purchase the larger cans with Thrive Life just like with most other products and companies out there. But for some reason with these chicken slices, that isn't the case, and it's much cheaper per serving and cheap, cheaper per ounce to buy the smaller cans. I have no idea why, but I ordered a case of the pantry cans rather than a couple of the larger cans that I typically would have ordered. So keep that in mind if you're ordering in May, and definitely it's something to keep an eye on all the time. I'll also have links to all the other online ingredient sources that I used in these meals, as well as the freeze-dried ingredients. And for those of you who are Thrive Life customers, it's almost June. Can you believe that? And we know they have new sales every month. So before I end this video, I will go over the June sale flyer real quick so that you can get your game plan ready for June deliveries. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video and these three meals that I prepared for you. If you did, don't forget to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and do make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because we're always coming out with new meals in a jar as well as meals in a bag along with all of our other content related to prepping and building self-sufficiency. Now let's take a quick peek at what's coming up on sale for the month of June. Now keep in mind that these are delivery specials that Thrive Life offers exclusively to their delivery customers, but that's not an exclusive club. Anyone can use the delivery service. There's no additional charge and it's not scary at all. You're never locked into anything. The delivery service is a great tool that Thrive Life offers to help us stay on track building our pantries and our food storage gradually over time at our own pace. When you register for the delivery service, you get to pick your budget and get as much or as little as you want each month. Most people get at least $100 so that they can qualify for free shipping, which is only available to delivery customers. Delivery customers also get 15% off the everyday retail price of every item every day. So when you combine that with the free shipping, it's a savings of at least 27%, which is really awesome. The sale items for June include raspberries, green chilies, peaches, red bell peppers, cheddar cheese, scrambled egg mix, and the country white bread dough mix. Now, of course, they always offer the monthly specials pantry can pack and the family can fruit and veggie pack. This one has one of every item that's on sale for the month in the smaller size cans, which are quart size. And the other one has the family or gallon size cans of just the fruits and veggies that are on sale that month. Now, you'll notice there isn't a meat on sale in June. Usually one of the meats are on sale. But this time instead, the proteins that are on sale are the eggs and the cheddar cheese. And those are two of our favorites, especially the scrambled eggs. We love these eggs. You just mix them with water and cook them up like scrambled eggs and you would not even know the difference between that and fresh eggs. You can also use them in recipes. I use it in my meals in a jar and just add water mixes for cornbread, muffins, things like that. They save the day when you run out of eggs. They're great for camping, backpacking, or any place that it's hard to bring fresh eggs in the shell. I could go on and on. We absolutely love these eggs. There are a couple other things that will be on sale in June that I'm very excited about, and those are the chef packs and the can organizing racks. You all know how much I love my can racks. These racks will rotate and dispense your cans on a first in, first out basis, which makes it so easy to keep your canned goods organized and rotated, making sure nothing gets shoved to the back of the shelf and overlooked. And there's a rack for every size can, from a tiny tuna can all the way up to one of those gallon size cans of freeze-dried foods. 
the chef packs these are wonderful and these were out of stock for so long i am glad they're finally back i recommend these packs to anyone who's just getting started with freeze-dried foods if you know you want to start stocking and using these foods because you've learned all the benefits to them and you want to start adding them to your pantry and to your food storage but you're not familiar with them and using them and cooking with them then these chef packs are wonderful. They come with nine or 10 different items that are all specially selected to work together and they come with a collection of recipe cards as well. Recipes that are designed to use those ingredients, main dishes and side dishes that you can put together using the ingredients in your pack and then you gain experience cooking with these foods. And you have a whole collection of recipes that you can save and continue to use. There's three chef packs, one with ground beef, one with chicken, and one with pulled pork. And I often encourage people to add those three packs to their first three monthly deliveries because you will gain so much experience with the food that way. Now, if you wanna save even more with your deliveries, there's a few ways that you can do that. First, you'll notice that every item is available singly or in cases. The smaller pantry cans come in a case of 10 and the larger family cans come in a case of six. And you'll notice that not only is it a little cheaper per can when you buy in the case, but they also give you a steeper discount when you buy the case for the delivery specials. So for things that I use a lot of, or some of our favorites, when I see a good sale, I grab a case if I can manage it because it will save me money down the road. Another way to save is with those monthly specials packs that I mentioned. They give you a steeper discount on the included items without having to buy a whole case of one single item. In fact, the pantry can special pack is another thing that I see a lot of people start with when they first start buying Thrive Life. And it's something that I also recommend to people because you get one of every item that's on sale, you get it in the smaller size and you get it at a steeper discount. So it basically allows you to try a larger variety of items more quickly for less money. So within a few months, you, you will have tried many, many different items that Thrive Life offers. And then you're not stuck with a huge can if you end up not liking it that much, if it doesn't end up being one of your favorite items. But you know what you do like, so you can start stocking up on the larger cans of the things that you do really like. So that's another really great way to get started with Thrive Life is with these pantry can packs because you can try a great variety more quickly. Another way to save money and make sure that you always get the best prices is to sign up for our text alerts. If you're not already receiving them, all you have to do is text SALE to 207-762-7138 and you'll be on the list. We send the month's delivery specials when they start, but we also send any special sales, any flash sales, any coupon codes that become available, all the things to make sure that you don't miss a discount. There's also a couple of ways to earn some free credit and get this food for free. So ask us about that if you'd like to know how. So take a look at the things that are on sale this month and comment down below and tell me what kind of dishes you would make with these ingredients. I have a few things planned already, some more meals in a jar and things like that, but I love getting new ideas from you guys because you have some great ones. And now if you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me an Italian flag down in the comments. And then go check out this playlist to see all the other meals in a jar that we've done on the channel so far. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.